differently. They could do a task while they're taking an MRI of their brain. And then they took them out and gave them a network adjustment session and then put them in the MRI tube again to see if they did the task differently, leaving a certain amount of time to make it val valid for a study. They found the people that, the, the per people, um, after the network adjustment, their brain worked 20 to 30 times, not percent, 20 to 30 times more efficiently to do the particular task. Mm -hmm. and again, that was done at a medical university. That is amazing because if you think about what does brain efficiency relate to in your body, just about everything, okay? And whether it's a kid trying to do better in school or an athlete trying to perform better, you know, or someone trying to do better at work in terms of providing for their family, you could go through their whole spectrum. And of course, their brain is involved with healing, okay? So that always makes me think of like, this is your brain, you know those commercials, this is your brain and this is your brain and drug shit, this is your brain and this is your brain on network? Okay, so that was a joke. Okay, so and that was a new one. So, um, <laughs> the, another thing was then all of that spurred more grants and research studies and one of the things they're doing now is you know the EMG studies that we do on you to, to, to characterize your progress. We put the sensors on you to get single spots at a certain interval, like what those muscles are doing now. They said, well, they rewired those to actually stick them onto people's bodies as they're adjusting them. So they stay on there with little adhesive things. And measure um, the muscle contractions that people have in, during their adjustment in response to getting network care and mathematically quantify it. And they actually published and determined with chaos math things I will not begin to describe, okay, <laughs> or pretend that I could. Um, but say that from that information, they can literally quantify the people from basic to intermediate to advanced care. Their nerve system is literally evolving. Their nerve system is literally showing greater levels of organization, which if your body is going to talk about your body self-correcting, your nerve system has to better organize your spine to do that. So the process of care that we're delivering as we're adjusting your subluxations, getting your body to release tension, is literally helping your nervous system better organize your whole body so you can maximize your level of well-being. There's nothing else on the planet in terms of healthcare that actually can, can show in documented research form that, their, that your, their response is actually delivering that. Okay, and it's your nervous system actually learning to make changes. So in the first part of care, basic care, when we're taking care of you, those very gentle touches are, have a very specific goal of helping your brain connect to the areas in your body that's lost the ability to control. See, when you have spinal subluxations, I talk to you like it's your power out, and it's the lights are out in a particular area. Literally, when the lights are out in an area, your brain can't see that part of your spine to be able to make changes in it. Okay, so if your brain can't see, for example, like if there's a low radar system that goes back and forth between the bones and joints in the brain, telling them how, what, how much tension should be in the disc, how much tension should be in the muscles, where the bone should be in space, if your brain can't see that area like the lights are out, then what happens is it doesn't know that you're over like this, <coughs> and it can't correct it. It can't assemble forces, the muscles or ligaments or whatever, to do this with your body. Anybody ever have the experience? Anybody ever have any kind? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anybody ever have the experience that they were lying on the table and we're working on them and we move their feet to the center and they say to us, is that center or that or experience say that, that now they feel off. They feel like now they're not center. Ever have that experience? Okay. We're moving you to center and your body doesn't know that you're like this. Okay? That's exactly what I'm describing your body loses that ability to observe itself the more stress is accumulating in your physiology. So then what happens is when things happen to you and accumulate, like what we'll be talking about with your spine and your emotions, then you don't, you don't have the tools to reset. It's like the, there's no thermos, the thermostat isn't you know, functioning to say, hey, it's 60 degrees and we've got to pump up the heat, okay? As your body does not have any clue that's the case, it's still living as if certain traumas and events are going on. So basic care, brain-body connection, bones, muscles, and nerve decrease tension. Most people are walking around as balls of tension. Their tension is the only thing holding them together, and they don't realize it. They move into intermediate care once a person's body is more peaceful. And the big goal in basic care, in addition to less tension, is breath. 
So we want to see breath go from the bottom of your spine to the top. We call it C to shining C. Bottom of the spine, coccyx to your occiput. Both those things have seasoning, coccyx and occiput. Okay? <laughs> from bottom, that was a bad joke. So <laughs> bottom to top. And so what happens is we want to see your body have breath move upwards, undulate through your spine, and people will feel as they're in care, and you will really need to pay attention for this, that their low, lumbar spine will start to have more breath, and then they'll feel breath through the middle of their spine, and then up through their shoulder blades into the neck. And they may not feel it all the time. It may be one specular adjustment or contact that they feel like, oh, I feel like I could breathe in my chest and all of that. <laughs> Okay, but that particular subluxation reduce, reducing help their body become out of defense to more ease. Then what happens, once we start to achieve that, we can work on the more chronic underlying things in intermediate care. And the chronic <coughs> underlying spinal subluxations are generally related to the physical, chemical, and emotional traumas that your body didn't recover from, that it wasn't able to reset from. And um, what happens is, now that your body has a better posture, it's more at ease, breath moves through, we can start to do um, longer contacts that will harness your brain, will make your body, your brain, you harness the muscles of your spine to move your spine. When you see people laying on the table, we hold, do a whole workshop just on that, and I highly recommend you go to that one, it's called Demonstrating the Somatopsychic Wave. When you're sitting here and you see people lying on the table moving, okay, what's going on is literally their brain is being able to harness the energy <coughs> that's trapped in their muscles to bless you to move the spine, okay? And to help their body stretch muscle groups to change the curvatures of their spine or correct spinal subluxations. And that's what we want to see your body able to do. So guess, cause guess what? Life's not going to stop happening to you. You're not going to stop having, I don't know, bumping into things or falling or playing sports or having a car accident or talking, well, hopefully you stop talking on the phone like this, um, you know, or having emotional things happen to you or life events, life will happen to you and stresses will happen to you and your nervous system has to adapt you to them. And the more tools your nervous system has to adapt you to, to stresses, the better, the better your health will be. Health is about being adaptable, okay? Then what happens is when that somatopsychic wave um, gets to a very smooth rhythmic way through your whole body, we move into advanced care. Advanced care is using your arms, legs, torso, the positioning of your body so that your body's positioning innately makes corrections in the alignment of your spine. So when you're not here, because we can't have you here all the time, but when you're not here and you're living your life and things happen to you, you won't even think about it. You just might move some way or move your arm and just the right angulation of arm without you really thinking of it will correct a particular rotation or a particular segment. Or you might just stretch your leg and it will shift the, the position of your sacrum. So we want your body to have that re-educative strategy and that's the next level of your nervous system better being able to organize. That's the whole process that we want to see you go through uh, during the course of care really in a nutshell. Now the shape, position, tension, and tone of your spinal structures determines your awareness and experience of life. The shape, position, tension, and tone of your spinal structures determines your the awareness and experience of life. Chiropractic in its infancy was not founded on pain relief or getting rid of headaches or back pain or anything like that. The founder of chiropractic talked about as a vibrational uh, a vibrational modality of healing in terms of your body so it was founded upon tone at the tone of your spinal structures would be or, or would set like vibration through your whole body and alter what your experience of your life was that was how he communicated it in the 1800s